Okay, Eric Wimmer here with Wasatch Heat Cable. Um, just a quick demonstration of heated panels and hopefully answering some of the questions you guys have about the copper panels that we we're potentially looking at for Little Bell. So going back to some beginning stuff, the project we got here, this is a home we're looking at. It's a cabin up in uh, Brighton Ski Resort. Uh, so you got your front door, garage here. But as you see on the roof, you can see a significant amount of snow and ice buildup. As we zoom in, you can actually see pockets in here of where heat cable is actually on and it's functioning. It hasn't been turned off the whole season, but has a hard time keeping up with the snow loads up there. This right here is the back of the house. Uh, again, you can see these pockets kind of uh, in here, uh, but this, the ice you can see the volume of ice is pretty significant. Here is looking at that roof in the summertime, and you can see the erosion that the ice and snow has done in between each one of those heat tape lines. So you can see this pattern. So a serpentine pattern of heat cable on a roof is obviously not gonna always do the job. So here is the heated panel system. This is what we're proposing for Little Bell. Uh, but you can clearly see a significant clearing on the roof edge. It doesn't. Ba it basically doesn't allow the snow to stick. It doesn't allow the ice to build up and keeps it entirely clear. Uh, again, the back of the house, you can see this uh, very clean, very clear. It eliminates any snow buildup. Uh, here's another, just comparing the effects of the two. You got a zigzag pattern on area, let's, we'll call that A. And then area B back here uh, is a single line of heat tape just running through the nose of that panel. So you can see a significant difference. So performance-wise, keeping the roof clear, uh, heated panels are definitely the way to go. So this is what heated panels look like um, when you come into valleys and how they're kind of organized on the roof. Uh, we have a special design depending on the type of roof but these are all custom made based on the pitch of the roof and the way the valleys come together. So this particular roof is obviously a green roof, so we used a green Kynar clad painted steel. Copper is obviously a copper look and down the road will patina over time. But this gives you an idea that we want something clean. It looks organized if I were to change my color here, but each one of these plates gives a very organized uh, system and pattern so that anything that does slide off the roof, like you can see all the snow up here, if that were to slide down, it's not gonna be pulling the cable off, it's not gonna be tearing, a plate, tearing the pl plates off the roof. Now, in comparing um, performances and how this stuff works, uh, up here in, I'm gonna go to a, a red pen here, but. You can see we've got a five watt cable, eight watt and a 10 watt in the steel plates. And the distance of what it cleared in each one of these is very similar. We literally saw no more than about, I think tops was three quarters of an inch between the five watt and the 10 watt. So very insignificant as far as the performance itself. But when we came down to looking at copper versus steel, huge, significant amount of difference. This right here on the steel was about a 10 inch clearing with one line of heat, whereas the copper you can see is significantly larger and that ended up being, I think it was around 18 inches. So copper is definitely better in performance. And uh, here's, here's another th couple of tidbits here on, on material. So when considering the type of material, this is steel right here in this. I should go to a green color here, but the heating contrast runs roughly 12 inches across for the steel. So our steel panels, we typically do them at 12 inches, not any bigger. If you go bigger, then you lose efficiency and you're gonna be clearing less area and you could run into cold spots. But uh, in, in exploring the different types of material, we decided to try aluminum. So I'll just put AL for aluminum on this, and you can clearly see what aluminum does. So that right there is your aluminum panel and the heat that's in it. it uh, we found that the cold would push back on the aluminum 
easier and more powerful than the heat will push outward. So we didn't really get hardly any, res any results off the aluminum. Back over here on the other side, this is the copper panel itself. So significantly <laughs> greater as far as transferring that heat, heat and keeping it clear. Uh, this right here is probably one of our best examples of what the system looks like when all said and done. We can coordinate these things so that you've got these kind of like a brick type pattern, or if you wanted something where on this back one where it's kind of, we can set it up so it's kind of organized and staggered clean. So it just depends on what you want and how you're interested in having that done. But overall, this, whoops, this is what you can expect look-wise. And the cable actually slips right in, right in to the lip. So it can come out and it can go back in, but it's pressurized in that cavity along each row, allowing the heat to transfer into the, into the metal. So that pressure is, is key in the performance. But the advantage of this whole system is that you can get to the cable when it goes bad. So if you put a, put a roof on and the copper or steel plates, 50 years from right now, you may need to replace the cable a couple of times and you don't have to replace the whole roof to do so. So that's one of the advantages. Uh, one of the questions I think was, uh, Andy brought this up and it's a really good question is what about the cost difference between going with steel versus copper? And I kind of ran some scenarios and here's some numbers. I know you can kind of see them, but I'm gonna explain what this is. If we took a 100 foot roof and we put copper on it versus steel. So copper, we're looking at, you'll see a number over here, 45 and 48 inches. That's how deep we need to go on Little Bell's eaves in order to keep the clearing of snow and ice. So copper, we can go at 15 inch increments which between 45, that is a total of three rows. At 48, we gotta go four rows. If we do three rows on the steel, we're gonna to be too shallow. We're gonna end up with ice at the top of it. So looking at this, um, 300 feet of copper panel for 100 foot, let me, let me put this up here, 100 foot roof edge, okay? So we need 300 feet of copper, 300 feet of cable versus the steel, we need 400 feet of copper not copper, 400 feet of steel, and 400 feet of cable. The cost difference, 31,000 some change, 27,800-ish, and the difference percent-wise is 11.3%. But here's some things to note, and I just put these on here. You're going to see an increase in electrical work required to get the job done because you have to run longer lengths of cable, which means we might need more breakers. This, this right here, I can't put an exact number to it because it's gonna depend on um, per, I'm gonna just put per building, whoops, building. So each building is gonna be different. Uh, the running cost is also gonna go up because you have more cable. So in analyzing, in analyzing all of this, between copper and steel, the efficiency of clearing the roof, copper is by far going to outperform, whereas the steel, you might save a little bit of money, about 11%, um, overall between the two of them. I think the copper looks a lot better. I know there's, there's steel out there that looks like copper, they make it look like a patina copper, but it just doesn't look the same. So anyway, copper, I think just looks better. But again, this is a decision you guys need to make and decide, you know, do you really want to do it the right way maybe and go copper all the way on everything? Or do you want to integrate steel plates on, on certain areas to save a little bit of money? Think about it. If you've got additional questions, maybe shoot them over to me. But I'm hoping that some of this information is going to be helpful to you. Uh, I hope that you guys can see the way these panels go together, how they are organized, and the performance of this stuff so that you can make a good decision. So I'm here to answer your questions, educate you the best you can, so that the best I can, so that you guys can make a good decision. Again, I hope this is helpful. 
uh, feel free to reach out to me with any other questions. Thanks.